episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features our Mojave's Frank, Gallery's Big Panzer III, and a wireless lighting rig you have to see. New product rundown brought to you by HobbyZone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's monthly look at the latest releases. I'm Kendra Bell. I'm Aaron Skinner. Now, Arma Hobby of Poland has earned a reputation for producing really well molded and nicely detailed 172nd scale aircraft. The latest offering looks terrific a Nakajima Ki 84 Hayate, which is Japanese for Gale. Codenamed Frank by the Allies, the Hayate was one of the best Japanese fighters of World War II. Beautifully molded, the fuselage halves feature recessed panel lines, rivets, and fasteners. The same is true of the wings, which also have open shell ejection ports and control surfaces molded in place. Both the lower and upper wing halves are molded as a single part, the latter joined by the gear base, establishing the dihedral. Each horizontal stabilizer is a separate part, and optional upper fuselage sections are given for the canopy open or closed. Up front, behind the one-piece cowl opening, are a pair of well-molded cylinder banks with separate pushrod housings and reduction gear cover, as well as exhausts below cowl flaps. The four-blade prop is a single part with a separate spinner. Cockpit detail includes frames and controls molded inside the fuselage, floor, a frame for the seat, instrument panel and controls. Weighted tires cap well-molded gear legs, and the bay doors are thin. Drop tanks and two sizes of bombs are offered as underwing stores. The canopy is supplied in three parts with crisply molded frames. Pre-cut masks will ease painting. Photo etched brass supplies seat belts, the engine ignition harness, some controls, and intake screens. Beautifully printed decals give stencils and markings for six francs. One from the 104th Sentai in August 1945, one from the 11th Sentai in the Philippines in 1944 and 45, a natural metal trainer in Japan in 1945, a 47th Sentai home defense fighter in 1945, an aircraft from the 57th Shimbutai from the Battle of Okinawa in May 1945, and a natural metal fighter covered with green splotches on upper surfaces. This looks like another detailed and well-engineered kit from Arma, and I expect we'll see a lot of these on contest tables. Agreed. A few episodes back, we looked at Gallery Models 1 16th scale Stug. Now the company has delivered the natural next step and released a 1 16th scale Panzer III, the vehicle the Stug was based upon. The kit actually has parts to build one of three versions, Ausführungs J, L, and M. The large hull tub is sturdy and receives the road wheel arms with full span torsion bars. The nicely molded road wheels and return rollers get wrapped in separate hard plastic tires with branding on the sidewalls. Once the drive sprockets and idlers are on, the running gear is completed with individual link tracks. The rear reveals differences between the earlier J and L with two exhausts under an open vent and the later M with a single muffler. Coming from inside watertight intakes added to give the tank fording capability. On the Glacis, the J and L have headlights and hatch hinges absent from the M. Different upper hulls are provided for the J and M, reflecting changes in the engine deck. Either can be used for the L, depending on the version, but the instructions aren't clear as to how that relates to the marking options. Regardless of the version, the engine hatches are separate. Also different are the side-mounted vents, which are open on the J and L, as opposed to the M's covered intakes for fording operations. The separate fenders are the same for all three versions. Schurzen are supplied for the Ausf M version and come in pre-cut sheet styrene. The turret comprises the upper shell, base with separate ring, two-part front, and cheek plates. The turret's bustle stowage box is a terrific slide molded part that will only need the back and lid attached. The commander's cupola has separate hatches and clear parts for the vision blocks. Also separate and probably posable are the side hatches which have interior details. While the inner mantlet is the same for all three variants, there are options for the outer part that fits on the spaced armor. The M and L use the same slide molded plastic barrel and a metal barrel is supplied for the shorter gun of the J. The guns include breech, spent cartridge collection basket, and coaxial machine gun. 
Photo Etched Brass supplies engine screens for the J and L, tool clasps and straps, part of the mantlet spaced armor, and a few other details. And there's braided copper wire for the tow cables. Decals and color diagrams give eight marking options. Two AUFs Ls, one dark yellow with green, the other dark gray with splotchy winter whitewash. Two AUFs Js, one in Tunisia, the other in Russia. And four AUFs M tanks, one in streaky red, brown, and green over dark yellow, the others with splotches of green or red, brown, and green. That is a lot of kit with plenty of build options, so it should make for an interesting project. Finally, here's something really cool, and I'm excited about the possibilities it offers modelers. Since LEDs revolutionized lighting for models, we've seen a lot of lighting sets hit the market. What's unique about the Lumable from Vozentech is that the LEDs are wireless. Using technology similar to wireless phone or device chargers, the base generates a magnetic field, so when the supplied LEDs are brought into it, they absorb and convert the energy and illuminate. As you can see, the field is strong enough to power the LEDs several inches off the surface and a little beyond the boundary. According to the manufacturer, the field will power the LEDs through pretty much any material except metal. The plate will give an audible signal if it detects metal. Imagine the possibilities to light your models if you don't need to run wiring from the base to the model. These LEDs are small enough to mount inside most models and like any other lights can be connected to fiber optics to carry the light to smaller spaces. The basic set includes the power plate and power supply and 25 LEDs, five of each color, red, green, blue, white, and orange. Each base can power up to 1,000 of the micro LEDs and you can buy extra lights in lots of 25. It's a great looking kit and will make lighting a snap if you're worried about wiring. And super news is it should be available from ComebackHobbyStore.com by the end of June. Look for a review of the Hayate on FineScale.com in the near future. And while you're on FineScale.com, don't forget to check out our how-to videos, snapshots, and more. And don't forget to check out the Kalmbach Hobby Store for tools like these from Green Stuff Worlds and other items. And while you're on the website, don't miss your chance to enter FineScale Modeler's 40th Anniversary Sweepstakes for your chance to win the grand prize, a $1,000 shopping spree at MegaHobby.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Kendra. I'm Aaron. We'll see you next month. A few episodes ago, we walked there, bleh, 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 but it sounds better when you accent it. Panzer Kampfwagen. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> you can check out how to Snapchat. Uh, Snapchat. <laughs> Snacks at Snapchat. <laughs> if you worried about what, uh, and we'll make what, uh, Holy crap, we've made it. There is no try. Do or do not, there is no.